all right guys what's going on hopefully you guys are doing good quick video here I'm gonna go over graphing or graphing on the coordinate plane all right so these are the notes that we took in class so these should be in your journal if you've been following along throughout the year like you should have these should actually be in your journal already um, if they're not exactly the same remember I do different notes uh, same set of notes but for different class periods so there may be a couple things that are different feel free to add to your notes okay um, so I did also scan this and it is in the Google form for your, as part of your review so you can look over them or maybe you never got them into your journal and you want to add them now feel free to do so okay so real quick just going to spend uh, 20 seconds or so 30 seconds or so going over these notes but remember that when we are talking about the coordinate plane that is where we graph and there are four sections to the coordinate plane. Now I'm going to get a little bit more into this into the next video but really what I want you to understand is that there are four quadrants that are numbered in counterclockwise form. Remember, a clock goes to the right. Counterclockwise means we're rotating to the left. These are your four quadrants, starting in the top right, one, two, three, and four. And if you notice here, every point that is graphed on that quadrant or in that quadrant is going to have those symbols attached to it, meaning that your points are both going to be positive in quadrant one, both going to be negative in quadrant three, and so on as you look here. Okay. Remember your x-axis is going to be your horizontal axis and your y-axis is your vertical axis. Horizontal going left to right, vertical going up and down. Your origin is 0, 0. That's where we always want to start when we graph. And to the left of the origin we have negative. To the uh, south or, to, or down on the origin, excuse me, um, is go down on the y-axis, that is going to be also negative. To the right of the origin is positive, and above the origin is going to be uh, positive as well. So coordinates are always graphed in the same form as x and then y. Remember your x first. I always remember it alphabetical order, x, y, z. So your x always goes first, which means you should be starting at the origin and moving either to the right or to the left first, depending on whether that first coordinate is either positive or negative. Okay. Um, from there, then you will move up and down on your y-axis, and that is how you will graph a point on the coordinate plane. Now, let's take that information that we just quickly discussed, and I know I went kind of quickly on it, um, but if you need to, remember this is a video, you could go back, rewind it, listen to it again. Um, anyways, here, what we have now is an example that I'm going to do with you guys. It says here in this example that we have four points, four points that are graphed on the coordinate grid or the coordinate plane. Uh, which ordered pair does not appear to be represented by one of these points. So we're looking for these four points that they give us here, we're looking for which one does not show up as one of our four points that we have on the coordinate plane, on the coordinate grid. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One is you could come up here and you can write the coordinates for each one of these points on the graph and then compare what you wrote to what's down here. So for example, what I mean by that is this point right here, I'm just going to label this A just for the sake of explanation this point right here is going to be if I start at my at my origin first this point moving on my x-axis first I'm moving to the left which makes it a negative value is going to be my x is going to be a negative 4 my y then I need to move up which makes it positive and I'm at about a half so 0 0.5 or some of you you need to recognize that a half can also be written as a fraction as such okay so I can do this for each one of these points and then compare it to my values down here all right um, or what I could do is try to graph each one of these points and see if they match with what's going on here so for example if I took J right here and I did negative 4 and then a half I would see that I'm at this point so you got to be careful because it's asking us for not this point is represented on the graph okay um, now I'm going to take that strategy. I'm, I'm just going to move for um, do the ones that look easier first. So if I'm looking at this, this one right here and this right here, it's going to take me a little bit of work. They look kind of scary, so I'm going to leave them aside. I'm going to start with G now. Okay, I'm going to do G. So G says that my x is negative one. So if I start at the origin and I move to negative one on the x-axis, I'm right here. Then I got to move down to negative one and a half. All right, so negative one and a half, that means that this point is going to be right here. I think I already found my answer, okay? I think I already found my answer because that point is not a point. This value right here 
is not represented anywhere on the graph. But let me talk about 5 over 2, and let me talk about 3 over 2. These are improper fractions. And in order for me to graph these, I need to convert these to a mixed number. Okay? And I do that by dividing my numerator by my denominator. Or in other words, I want to see how many times my denominator will go into my numerator. So 2 can go into 5 two whole times. 2 times 2 is 4. So I am missing one more number, one more value in order to get to 5. That is my remainder of a remainder of 1. And then my denominator stays the same. Same thing down here. How many times is 2 going to 3? Well, that's going to be one whole time. 2 times 1 is 2, so I need one more to get to 3. That is my remainder, and my denominator stays the same. Okay? If I were to graph these points, F being 2 and 1 half, I would move start at my origin, move over to 2 and a half, which is right here on the x-axis, and then I would move down to 3. That one works. Okay? So because it works, I'm looking for not. That is not my answer choice. And then finally down here, H. I found that it was one and a half for x, so I'm going to move over because it's positive one and a half, one and a half on my x, and then I'm going to move up two because it's a positive two. That one is also a point, so we found that our answer is actually g in this case. Okay, so there are two, three problems. Excuse me, three problems for you guys to complete on the Google form below. Um, please try your best on those and review this video. Watch it again if you need to, and go over the notes if you also need to. Okay. Good luck, and I know you guys are going to do okay.